What's going on y'all? Before we start the next high adventure video, we have a big reveal going on. Baby number three, we're gonna find out the gender. My wife has, what are those called, love? Confetti cannons. My wife knows the kids do not. Let's find out. Who's ready to find out if it's a boy or a girl? Yeah. yeah. Alright guys, you guys ready? Ready? Three, two, one. Whoa! It's a boy! What is it, Bella? It's blue! What do you guys think? Oh! There goes Bella. Crock and Trevor Way. It's a boy! We have boy number two along the way. Yes, it's a baby brother. <laughs> oh my word. Well, that was kind of anticlimactic. I've got a big mess in the backyard now. I didn't think about that, but a little boy, what, what, what's our name? Uh, Braxton James. Braxton James. We're pretty excited, love. All right, let's get to some fishing. Welcome back, YouTube fam, to another high adventure video. Check it out. We are on brand new water. First time here on the channel. We are at the Santee Cooper River that dumps out into Lake Marion, which then dumps out into Lake Moultrie. We are in the low country here in South Carolina fishing what is commonly referred to as a flooded forest. The first look at this lake is it looks phenomenal. I've never seen anything like this before. Like all these trees, they're like cypress trees. And I think gum trees were the other trees that are like, all, it's just all flooded out and everything's covered with moss. And it's unlike really anything I've seen before. Definitely don't have anything like this in Idaho, that's for sure. We're just gonna get out and get started. I don't even know where to begin. I have my Navionics, the map on my phone that kind of shows me the layout, the topography of this water, but <laughs> it looks incredible. Hopping on the boat. This is where we're gonna be living the next 24 hours. We do have to be careful because we are in gator country now as well. So no jumping in the water, that's for sure. So we're gonna have to uh, just tough it out. It's gonna be hot the next couple of days, hanging out on the 16 foot John boat, camping it up. Let's go get started, I'm excited. <laughs> Look at this. Look at where we're going, dude. I mean, it's about 15, 20 feet wide here probably. We're in three feet of water. And I actually just met a guy at the boat ramp. He was like, he kind of gave me vague instructions. He said to follow this little canal. He said, careful, it only gets about two feet deep though. So, <laughs> I don't know. We're all on an adventure together here. This is apparently gonna take us out to kind of the main lake area. Literally this whole lake. It's just a bunch of trees and stuff. Ah! I don't know what kind of good spiders wait for me in all these trees, but I'm trying to avoid, trying to avoid all that. Check this out. Don't go through the long grass, right? We're going through it. Okay, we have a fork in the road here. I think, I think he said to take a left. I see the tree line up there. We're gonna do that. Yeah, that gets pretty skinny back up in there. I'm gonna head this way. All right, I think we made it. There's an opening right there. Woo, you know we're shallow. Look at the mud we're kicking up. 1.3 feet. All right, we are here. I have just picked a big plot of trees let's figure hey this is as good a place as any to start i'm thinking let's get this out for our trolling motor what we're gonna be doing today is we're just basically gonna be pitching and flipping a bobber setup set at about two feet of depth i just have a small hook small split shot in fact i'm gonna measure up two feet on this thing right about here 
Oh, there's something jumping right there, a bunch of little bait. Then I have this little cooler right here, and I've just got a massive amount of Fred worms in it. We're gonna be grabbing red worms out, baiting up, and we're just gonna pitch and flip around all these trees. There we go, look at that. A little red worm about two foot of depth. I'm gonna pitch it right here to start. Probably gonna be plenty of little snags today, that's for sure, but that's just part of fishing the trees. Oh, beautiful, beautiful positioning. Oh, there's a bite right there. Got him. There you go, it didn't take long. I right, set the drag a little looser than that. And we just have a little, little bluegill. You see how fast that we got hit? A little bluegill, that's catfish bait right there. Boom, nothing special, but they were right. Like you'll get hit fast. Pretty sure we're gonna get in on a ton of those today, which is just kind of the price you're gonna have to pay to find these shell cracker, I'm thinking. Something wants it. Missed him. Come on. Got it. Oh, there you go. There you go. Come on. Another brim, looks like. Yep. A little bit bigger, though. A little bit bigger brim for the second fish. Nothing terribly crazy, but a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. Come on. There he is. Come on. Come on. Got him. Ooh, he's taking off. Come on. A little bit better, better. Hey, there's a little bit better one. There we go. That's definitely the biggest brim of the day so far. We're gonna just throw him straight on ice. I did not bring any supper. So we kind of need some fish whoa, to eat, which would be nice. It's definitely the biggest brim of the day so far. Hopefully that's the beginning. It's been a long morning. Awesome. Sweet, all right. Let's see if there are any more down there. Usually where you find one, you find many. YouTube fam, we have a brief break in the action to tell you all about EcoFlow, the power station that charges faster than any other. EcoFlow Extreme Charge technology recharges the power station from zero to 80% within one hour, which is one of the fastest recharging rates on the market. And the EF Delta features a patented X-Boost technology which allows users to power even 1800 watt devices. The EcoFlow Delta can be fully recharged through a 12 or 24 volt car port within about 10 hours or via solar panels in about four hours. The EcoFlow Delta boasts six AC outlets, four USB and two USB-C outlets. It has every port you'll ever need, allowing you to power any device anywhere and up to 13 devices simultaneously. So click on the link in the description below to get your hands on the EcoFlow Delta and its solar panel charging companion and check out the other awesome products the EcoFlow has to offer. Right between these trees here. Looks pretty, looks pretty solid. There's one. Come on, eat it. Got him. Oh yeah, there you go. There's a good pull. There we go, right in the same area. Hey, we might be on something now. Oh, there's a shell cracker. Hey, now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. There's our shell cracker. Nothing jumbo, but there's a solid, solid cracker right there. <laughs> First Santee Cooper shell cracker. No, nothing massive, but there we go. Here's your brim and your shell cracker right there. A little bit different, just a little bit. You could tell typically by like the ear there, there's like a little orangish yellow around the ear of that shell cracker and there isn't around the brim. We're gonna get back in there. See if we can find some more here. Guys, guys, guys. I think I just saw a gator. This is my first gator that I've ever seen in the wild. I was just getting ready to come over here and fish all these all these trees and stuff over here. Just kind of move into a different spot. There he is. Oh, officially my first gator, y'all. That is so cool. That is so cool. Doesn't look like a bad one either. Doesn't look like a bad size. Friendly reminder uh, not to take a dip even though it's hot outside. We ain't in Idaho anymore. <laughs> oh, what did I hit? Hopefully it wasn't a gator. It says I'm in five feet. Hmm. 
There's something. Come on. Something's got it. Oh my lord of mercy. You bomb. You miserable wretch. Oh, not in the tree. No, 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 no. Thank you. Oh man, I had my bait and everything too. Lucky. We're getting a few hits around here. We might have another better shell cracker around here. There it is. Got him. Got him. There we go. Solid fish. Solid fish right here. What do we got? What do we got? Shell cracker or brim? Uh, big bluegill. Big bluegill. Oh, there you go. Hey, I'll take another bluegill. Look at that. Almost like a bird's pecked him or something like that. Got a hole in the side. We'll put him on ice. Where's one? Come on. Got him. Got him. With a piece of beef jerky in here. Come here, you. Man, that might be a keeper. Oh, yeah, that's a shell cracker. That's a shell cracker. Boom. But that is a solid fish right there. Mm -mm. Another one for the cooler. All right. Let's go ahead and get some of our fish out for cooking. Look at those. It's not bad at all. Some solid size. Look at that. Not bad. Oh wait, give me my knife. Not terrible, not terrible. Not the biggest either, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosers right now. I'm actually gonna flay these up. You know, throwing all these guts over the side. I don't know, that might bring more gators in. I spotted the gator maybe about 50 yards that way, so. Maybe, and he was coming from this area. So, mind your P's and Q's. I know a lot of people that just cook these up whole, but when they get big enough like this, I like to fillet them so I don't have to pick through the bones. And I'm trying to get fancy with the fillet in here. All right, went ahead and cleaned all the fish up. Not a lot, but it's enough for a lunchtime meal here. All right. It's got a little salt and Team Weber roasted garlic and herb seasoning. Ugh, come here, you. Oh, cheapers. That's all falling apart. I didn't even realize that. Well, that's okay. Anywho, I'm betting on myself to catch more fish this afternoon and also having the opportunity to potentially get in on some catfish later as well. Uh, oh, I need gas. Durr. There we go. Ooh, that's hot. Turn that down a little bit. I love this roasted garlic and herb seasoning. This stuff is awesome. Kind of have to use a lot to really get the full effect of the flavor, but it's delicious. Almost all of the Weber seasoning is really, really good. I'm a massive Team Weber fan. Yeah. Some fresh pan fish. See how it tastes. Mmm. Super flaky. Oh. Delicious. Oh yeah. That's good. You know, I didn't think about bringing lunch or supper because I kind of just took it for granted. I was like, I'm brim fishing. We're going to catch a lot of brim. And granted, we have. I've probably caught 30, 40 brim, but only, only the four keepers. So the bigger ones have definitely been harder to come by. And... I haven't found like that school of shell cracker yet. Okay. Ah, there we go. Cheers. Oh man, that's good. That Aussie style lemonade from Monster. The can looks awesome too, but that's delicious. Mmm. Yeah, I can rock with that this afternoon. All right, guys. Got some lunch, got a little energy drink flowing through us now. It's time to get back on the hunt. We still gotta get us like, I, I want me a pancake shell cracker. That's what we came down here for. We gotta get back on the hunt here, see if we can't uh, 
put together some food for this afternoon for supper time at the very least there's something really good about that brim that shell cracker that that meat is just like super flaky almost like a like melt in your mouth kind of a thing it is delicious absolutely delicious but i gotta find me some slabos here somewhere in all this thicket there gotta be some hanging out All right, y'all, we are here at this big old train bridge you guys see behind me. It's been a pretty slow afternoon. Fished a few more tree or brush piles, tree standings, whatever you want to call it, and uh, just more little fish. So I found this on my maps and I thought, you know what, let's give it a go. Can't be any worse than what we've been fishing. So we're in about nine feet of water. It is June and uh, I know we've kind of missed a little bit of the window for like I think a majority of the shell cracker and the brim spawning, I believe. So might be post spawn, might just be a little slower. I, I don't know. Or I'm just really bad at locating this fish, which is a possibility. Oh, that one, that one, didn't even realize it. Not very big. Hey, but the first fish of the bridge, more small brim. Like we haven't caught a bajillion of these all day. Jeez. This one other one. Good net. Oh my lordy. That's the smallest fish of the trip. There you go. There's a there's a Santee Cooper pig. There's one. Oh, there's a big one. Up there. Hey, there we go. There's a shell cracker. Nice. Look at that, guys. <laughs> Finally, look at that. Not a bad one either. Not a bad one. This will go on ice. The start of supper right here. Let's get some more. Oh, there's a bite. Got it. Just like a solid fish. Wait, what? Wait, this is, wait, this is a flathead. Oh my gosh. Guys, this, <laughs> this is my very first flathead ever on my channel. Yes, look at that. Look at this guy. Check this out, my first flathead catfish ever is about eight inches long. But look at the colors on that. That is so cool. A first here at High Adventure Videos. Caught a flathead, bouncing a worm. Look at the mouth on that thing. Look at that. That is awesome. We'll put them back, but that is sweet. There we go. Nice, thank you little flathead. First ever go free that was awesome finally i caught a flathead caught every other catfish except a flatty check this out bunch of carcasses from mayflies look there are like three of them right there i think those are mayflies uh, just, just crunch off Woo! There, there's a mayfly hatch going on we're gonna know tonight we turn the lights on we have mayflies all over the boat that's crazy. They're all over on all these pillars here. All up and down. Oh boy. Nasty little boogers. All right, guys. We put a couple in the cooler. But still, like, just a bunch of small fish. What I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and just kind of pack this up. Head down. Find the place we want to camp for the night. It's a little breezy right now. So hopefully that'll uh, calm down as the evening goes on. I don't know. I forgot what the weather was going to be like. But I'll catch you guys at the campsite. All right, y'all, welcome to my place of residence for the night. So I scrapped the idea or the plan of catfishing tonight because it's just so daggum windy out there. Like it's, uh, if, if the, I mean, I think it'll probably calm down, but I don't know if it doesn't, like my boat all night is just gonna be ka-chung, ka-chung, ka-chung. And I like getting rocked to sleep, but at some point it just becomes like too much so we're gonna go ahead and get camp set up kind of get uh, tucked in for the night if you will uh 
All right, you guys ready for the big reveal? Get ready, get ready. You guys know we always go extra here at High Adventure Videos. Lights out. All right, three, two, one. Yeah! <laughs> Check that out. What do you guys think? Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is the way to camp right here, ladies and gentlemen. Tent on the John boat in the middle of a flooded forest. And we are all lit up. We're going to attract not only the fish, but the bugs, potentially gators, pretty much everything. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Let me show you guys the inside of this tent here. Take a look at the inside. Look how lit up this is. And I'm actually running LED lights. So they, these use up like a 12th or something of the power of your typical lighting that runs on, I can't think of your standard electrical, whatever they call it. Anyway, let me let me take you guys on a tour here. Let's get a light on in here. All right, check it out. We've got the air mattress blown up, the travel pillow. Uh, got a nice blanket as well. You know, if you guys want any of this stuff for your own high adventures, uh, just go to the link in the description below. Also, if you want merchandise, shameless plug like the octopus necklace I'm wearing, merchandise, all kinds of stuff. Again, links in the description below. Check this out. We also have the EcoFlow running. It's charging up some batteries. I got all kinds of all kinds of uh, time on that. Check that out. Still got 99 hours of runtime on that. More than enough to charge everything up that I need and all that good stuff. This is camping, ladies and gentlemen. This is high adventure camping right here. Get some. <laughs> all right, y'all check this out. Ethan at Lake World Bait Shop hooked me up with this. This is called a thermocell and it's supposed to be a mosquito and horsefly and multi-insect repellent, basically what you do. Just insert the cartridge here. As you can imagine, there are, like that guy right there, a lot of mosquitoes out here in the flooded forest. Who would imagine that? Anyway, you put the little cartridge in, then there's this little mat. I've never seen one of these before. Like, like this is totally foreign to me. There's this little, basically like, I don't know, it looks like a little thing that makes your car smell good that you stick under the seats and you just slide it into there and you turn this guy on and then there's supposed to be a pilot light here. Oh, is, is it on? Yep, just turned on. There's a little light that's glowing. I don't know if you guys probably can't see that in there. Anyway, and then you just set this like, I don't know, I'm gonna just set them like right there. And basically what it does is it actually heats this up right here. There's another mosquito. They're all over out here. Anyway, it heats up this little pad and it slowly burns it. And there'll be like a little smoke that it'll give off and it'll actually keep the bugs away. I'm all, I've already killed like five or six mosquitoes on me. So I'm interested to see how this works. So I'm just gonna set this guy like right there. And uh, oh, I actually just got a whiff of it right there. That's crazy. It is a little breezy this evening and I was kind of hoping that would be enough to keep the mosquitoes away, but definitely not. I mean, they are out in full force <laughs> here in the swamp. Here we go. Got the green light going into the water. What in the world is that? That's a spider. It's a big old spider going across the water. That's gnarly. That is another reason why I brought the tent. For the bugs. Honestly, I also didn't feel comfortable <laughs> with gators in the water either. Just like sleeping out under the stars. I don't know if a gator would jump in the boat with me, but I have seen those suckers like come out of the water and I just didn't want to take a chance. So I was like, no, we're, we're bringing the tent. So I think it's a good call so far. That's not bad. Take all the protein I can get. Well, it ain't much, but it's better than nothing. Let's see, I need this. I need... Wait, what? <gasps> oh, look at this, guys. Oh, Mikey, you're beautiful. I must, when did I put this in there? Oh my gosh, this has been in there for like, at least a month. I forgot I packed this. I packed this for one of my trips, I mean, it, I don't know, that was like at least a month ago. Oh, saved by mwah, the ramen noodles. All right, there you go. Look at that. I don't know if you guys see that very well or not, but cooked to perfection. We'll say a quick prayer. 
thank the Lord for our day and for keeping us in safety. Hmm. Also ask for a little safety through the night. There's definitely a different vibe out here, knowing that there are gators in the water. Um, I'm looking around. I'm surrounded by bog and cypress trees and lily pads and I don't know what could be lurking under the surface just 10 feet away right under the boat you know there's a, a definitely a little eerie that's for sure I also brought my gigging pole just in case for snakes that was reason number eight to bring the tent as well because snakes will just jump right in the boat with you and I didn't want in the middle of the night to like wake up to something sliding into the sleeping bag with me you know so I was like no down here in the marsh we're gonna we're gonna be in the tent and uh we'll wake up and and check the boat when we wake up and make sure we didn't have any uh passengers climb aboard while we were sleeping oh hallelujah hallelujah I always break off a little of the ramen mm. and eat it raw I don't know why I just taste good that is lovely. Mm. 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 I'm gonna go ahead and just make this like a soup and put the beef flavoring in there. May as well give myself as much opportunity for food as possible. Since I don't know how to catch fish, brim of all things apparently. Sheesh. I don't know if my GoPro picks this up, but they're just absolutely loads. There you go loads of little minnows and we've got a bunch of water beetles too like that guy right there i haven't seen any shell cracker or like any i see a few bigger minnows out there but i'm not seeing any brim you know like the shadows of brim moving in anywhere unfortunately maybe we'll drop the bobber out anyway just like toss it out like right kind of at the edge i do have to say though this little thing is going right here and i have noticed a massive difference since that started every once in a while i see like a little wisp of smoke coming off of it because it is burning oh like right there um but as a massive difference i have like no mosquitoes around me now like this that is that is a phenomenal little product highly recommend again i'll have a link in the description below to this guy too if amazon sells it i'm sure they do ah, trying to keep my mosquito netting closed so the bugs don't make it in here as much as possible. As much as we can, anyway. Whew! Being out in the sun and the wind and the water. Just something about that combination just takes it out of you. Oh, I love ramen noodles. I always keep, like, a pack of... What do they sell? Like, a box? Like, a flat of, like, 24 of them? I always keep some at the house. Don't know what to do for lunch? Ramen. Don't know what to do for dinner? Ramen. Late night snack? ramen it's a very versatile dish mm. oh my goodness y'all after eating all that food now all of a sudden the snoozers are starting to hit me <sighs> it's plenty warm i'm probably not even gonna sleep with the blanket tonight i don't even know why i brought a blanket you goober if it's calm in the morning we're gonna grab breakfast and we're gonna go catfishing first thing <sighs> i'm done I'll see you guys in the morning. <laughs> mm. That woke me up. <laughs> that woke me up. Well, we made it through the night. Check. This is about the only way that you can sleep out here. And not get eaten alive. Like this. <sighs> well, I'll find out here in the next 12 hours how many times I got bit last night by stuff. Probably one of the hottest nights of sleep I've ever had. lovely morning out. Wind finally died down. I'm thinking before we just go ahead and like get breakfast going, I think we're gonna tear the tent down. Turn us back into a fishing vessel here instead of a camping vessel. 
and then motor to our catfishing spot, which is only maybe a quarter of a mile from here. That way we can have our catfishing lines out and we could be fishing while we're cooking. Yeah, you know what? I like that idea. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right, y'all. We're back into a fishing vessel. Got this bottom half up for some chum here. There we go. Hello, catfish. Bunch of gar jumping everywhere. I don't like that. There we go. And we'll throw the second rod right back there. Nice. All right. Check that out. Pancake mix. We're upgrading the cooking game here at High Adventure Videos. We've gone from eggs and sausage to pancakes and a broth sausage table. Here we go, our first pancake. You know, the thing I just realized is I actually don't have a spatula. So this could get interesting. Trying to use my knife attachment here. Hurry and flip. Oh, look at that! It's golden! Wow! I'm making pancakes out here, y'all. Oh, oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it worked out. Let's admire that side, because that's the beautiful side. Look at that. There we go, our first pancake, flapjack, whatever you want to call it, out here on the boat. Let's see how I did here. It appears to be cooked all the way through. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's attempt to flip here. I don't know if I've ever flipped a pancake, to be downright honest with you. Might be a first here. Okay, that was a fail. We just threw up in the air. Oh, oh, whoa! A double flip, he landed back. <laughs> That's not what we wanted. Oh, whoa! Yeah! Oh! Oh! <laughs> that was awesome! Oh, and look at the color on that thing, too, by the way. I just took my, like, cooking level, as far as in RuneScape terms, from probably about a 55 to a solid 60 at this point in the game. Fresh brewed chai latte. Cheers. I pulled the catfish and lines in because we didn't have a bite. The one thing I noticed is there are just absolutely massive amounts of gar around here. And typically when you've got a ton of gar like this, from my experience and just talking with other people, a lot of times you're not gonna have a lot of game fish in the area. I'll catch you guys at the next spot. Guys, I just spotted another gator. There's another gator over here. Man, this is so cool. Doesn't seem like a bad sized one. Basically what you look for is like, what looks like a log moving across the top of the water. Very difficult to see because there are a ton of logs, you know, in this lake. Oh, there you go, there's a good shot of him. But uh, what you're looking for is kind of that wake behind him. And when you see a log that has a wake, you kind of know it's like, hey, wait, that's a gator right there. Holy cow, guys, that second gator, I don't know, but that thing looked huge. Like, that looked like a 10, 12 footer. I, I mean, that thing looked massive. Who wants to go for a swim? <laughs> That's so cool. Man, I love this state. All right, y'all, we're back at the bridge. 
I don't know, I just have a good feeling about it. I was thinking it might be a good place to fish while it's a little bit cooler in the morning. Once it gets a lot hotter, I can find the shade of all the cypress trees. But I caught that flathead here too. And I don't know, that flathead's just feeling kind of lucky. You know what I'm saying? I figure let's, let's follow the luck of the flathead here. There's one right there. Oh, this feels like a good one. This feels like a solid one. Oh, it's a big old br brim, big old brim. Look at this. Oh, hey, that's probably the biggest one this trip. Look at there. Hey, now we're cooking. Look at the pretty colors on that one. That's got a good mix of orange and purples and blue. That's the biggest one. That goes on ice right there, kids. All right, hey, maybe the catfish was a sign. The catfish was telling me, hey, come back. Little gar just hit the surface. Tons of those little gar out here. This one, this one, this one, this one. Hold them, hold them. We got one. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a shell cracker. That's a shell cracker. Look at that. Oh, that's the big one. There we go, guys. Look at that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, I moved off the bridge a little bit. And look at that. That's not a bad one right there. Oh, hook just popped right out. I moved away from the pilings and I'm just kind of out here in the middle. And that's a nice fish. That's what we're after, that and bigger. That's probably the biggest one this trip so far, which isn't saying much, but hey, beggars can't be choosers at this point. Get them on ice. Okay, okay. Maybe we've been fishing the pilings too closely. Maybe we need to back off. Let's see if we can find some more down there. Let's go, the little catfish wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. There's one. Got him. Another one. Another one. Yes. Right out here. Right out here. They're off the bridge. They're off the bridge. <laughs> Here's another pancake. This is what I've been waiting for. This is what I thought I'd be hitting all over in the cypress trees. Let's go. That's bigger than the last one. There's one. Got him. Ooh, that's a good one right there. Let's see how that hit. Yes. Stop the trolling motor. Oh, what's up? Wait, that is a shell cracker. Another one. Boom. <laughs> yes. Y'all, that ain't a shell cracker. That's a big old bluegill. That's the biggest piggy of the trip so far. I've talked to three different boats since I've been here, and everybody's just kind of bemoaning the fact that it's so slow. And we're getting fish now. We're just changing it up, doing something a little different. There you go, there was the previous big one. Eh, they're about the same. Eh, that's probably a little bit wider. Switching it up. Just experimenting. Trying new things. Not going with the flow, if you will. Trying to figure out something different, a different pattern. And here on day number two, we're starting to stick some fish. There's one. Oh, man. Man, he just hammered it. Another nice one. Another nice one. <laughs> there you go, y'all. There's the difference. We sat and we hammered that bridge behind us. Hammer. I mean, I hammered up and down. Probably, probably 75 yards that way, 75 yards that way. I would catch a small brim. Just one small adjustment. Moved out 20 feet, and now we're hitting fish. I'll admit, this isn't as fun as catching fish like in the cypress trees, but... I mean, I'm catching fish. So I would rather be catching fish in a place that's like, eh, okay, you know, not really special than be in like a gorgeous area and not catching anything. So we're finally, finally starting to get a little redemption here. Oh, it feels good. Check it out, guys. I see the trade. That's so cool. All right, y'all. It is time to try our hand one more time at some catfishing. However, final count, we have six shell crackers. Look at that one. Look how big that is. That's awesome. And we got two nice brim as well. 
eight panfish total. I'm really happy with that, especially for how slow the fishing has been. Let's go see if we can hook in to one of these Santee Cooper catfish though. All right, y'all, check this out. We are tied up to the railroad bridge. This is actually the river that you see behind me. This actually just snakes through this entire like flooded forest. And this is kind of the main through fare here that people use to get up and down uh, this section of river. Hey, let me see if I can show you guys here. You can see over there, there's a lot of timber that's like built up. Look at that big old tree that's come down. That's built up on this side. It's kind of slowing that current up, creating this eddy right out here. Check it out. Butterfly to herring out. That's what we're going to be using in this hole here. All right, the lines are set. Let's see what happens. Yes, we're gonna bite here. Right here. Got him. Got him. Yes. About 10 minutes. Doesn't feel terribly big. Doesn't feel huge. But it's our first, I'm assuming, catfish. Feels like it. Come on. Oh, yeah. Little blue blue just a babe there we go <laughs> nice aim for the big mamas caught about i mean that might be a pound send your dad my way would you there you go all right that's a start that's a start got it got him haha -ha. Oh, it's a gar. Ah, oh, you bum. I had this suspended down, um, just down right off the bottom. Because I thought, hey, maybe there's some catfish around the pillars. Where's my net here? There we go. I've been having a tough time with turtles. I was actually just getting ready to pull everything up. Whoa. And this guy just hit. There you go. Not what I'm after, but whatever. Oh, my heavens. Come here, you. This is the baby. Oh my goodness. Come on. I got lucky with the hook set. There we go. Look at those teeth right there. Ooh. He's gnarly. Gnarly, gnarly. We'll drop him back in the water. Actually, how did I hook him? Ooh, I got real lucky. That hook is just right there. Right there in the side. Thanks for fraying my line, you bum. We're getting a bite right here. Look at that. Look at that. Come on. Come on. Better not be no daggum turtle. Come on, where you at, baby? Oh, there's a bite. Holy cow, right behind us. Let's get took. Look at that. He's on it. Got him. Got him. There we go. Finally. Whew. Been to a few different spots up and down this river. All that to say, I feel like I haven't been hitting the catfish that I should be. Now they're blue. They have a mixture of channels and blues. Of course, I caught that flathead yesterday. Oh, what a pretty fish. What a gorgeous fish. Man, almost time to keep that and eat that right there. You know what, though? I've got a cooler full of shell cracker. And brim, I think we'll let you go. For a little bit bigger. If we can get a little bit bigger, we can get a nice, like, five, six pounder. I'll keep that. There you go. No jumbo, but still a fun catch. Well, y'all, no swamp donkeys this time, but that just means we've got to come back. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun coming down here and learning this body of water and the surrounding areas. I've seen the pictures. I've heard the stories. I know there are tanks in here. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get in on any ourselves, but like I said, I just excuse to come back down. That's all I'm thinking. Thank y'all so much for coming and hanging out with me for the past 24 hours for the first time ever on the Santee Cooper River. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. And as always, I will see you in the next one.